All right, welcome to the chemistry section. And I thought I'd start off this section by taking a look at a topic that most students dislike, and that is stoichiometry. And I think students dislike stoichiometry because they associate it with being the math section of chemistry. And that is true, this is a quantitative topic in chemistry. But really, the math itself is dead easy. It's just the chemistry that's difficult. And if you can understand the chemistry, well then these types of questions become a breeze and you actually look forward to them and get happy when you see them when doing the IMAT. Now, before we actually start looking at stoichiometry, I do have to tell you a bit about the periodic table because you need the periodic table to actually do these problems. And here's the catch, you don't actually have a periodic table, you need to memorize some of it. Now don't worry, you definitely don't need to memorize the whole thing, but you do need to memorize these first four periods here. So you have to memorize all these elements here and their atomic numbers. If you don't do that, well unfortunately you're not going to be able to do any stoichiometry. Now, this is not going to be a lesson on the periodic table. I will cover exactly how you can memorize this quite simply. But for now, just take my word for it. You have to memorize these first four periods. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's move into some stoichiometry. And to do stoichiometry, you have to be 100% confident on how to interpret a chemical equation. This reaction is telling you on a very simple scale that two hydrogen gas molecules, that is two H2 molecules, will react with one O2 molecule, that is one oxygen gas molecule, and it'll form two water molecules. Now in chemistry, we never work with individual molecules like this because that's too small a quantity. So what we're actually gonna work with is moles. So what this is telling us is that two moles of H2 will react with one mole of O2 and that'll create two moles of H2O. Make sure you get this. Don't think that it's saying that two grams of hydrogen gas are reacting with one gram of oxygen to produce you know, two grams of water. No, that's not what it's telling us. So as an example, let's say that we had two moles of oxygen gas. How many moles of hydrogen gas would we then need for four moles of water? Well, if we had two moles of oxygen gas, then we need four moles of hydrogen gas to produce four moles of water. You basically just follow the ratio that's laid out in this chemical equation. However, if I said the following, we have two grams of oxygen gas, how many grams of hydrogen gas do we then need for four grams of water? Well, then the problem changes completely. You can't just then use this formula and say, oh, well then we must need two grams of oxygen. No, that is not how it works. This equation tells us the quantity of atoms, not the weight of the atoms. So I'll show you how we work with this in just a minute, but don't make this mistake. You can only apply the ratio when dealing with the quantity of atoms. And the quantity of atoms we use, as I've said already, is moles. And you should also remember this. One mole is just equal to this number here, 6.022 times 10 to the power 23, which we call Avogadro's number. And remember this quantity, because you may need to use this quantity for certain problems. Okay, so having said all this, let's try a practice question. So here we have quite an easy IMAT style question regarding moles. So as always, attempt the question yourself first, and I'll assume you've done that. So let's get started on it together. A container holds 0.5 moles of hydrogen gas. How many hydrogen atoms are present in the container? So very simple, we just need to know Avogadro's number. All right, so Avogadro's number is just 6.02, and I said 6.022 before, but this is how they've put it here, so we'll go off this, times 10 to the power 23. That's one mole, we had 0.5. So that is how many hydrogen molecules we have, which is equal to 3.01 times 10 to the power 23. Now, the trick with this question is that they ask for hydrogen atoms, not hydrogen molecules. A hydrogen molecule is H2. We want to find just how many hydrogen atoms. So we're going to have to times this by 2, because this is H2. If we just want to find H, well, it's going to be twice this. So that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So the answer is B. So yeah, pretty simple question, but you have to read the question carefully because the IMAT likes doing this. They will throw in these little tricks here and then they will have one part of the answer in the actual answers here so that if you just get to this stage, you'll think, aha, I got the correct answer and you'll pick A. No, make sure you read the question properly. All right, 
Now that we've covered that, let's move on to probably the most important formula in the chemistry section, and that's this formula here, which I hope you've seen a few times before. Big M is equal to little m over m. Now, here's where people make mistakes. They think, ah, oh, this is such an easy formula, it's just, you know, three variables, I'm just going to remember this and I'll be fine for stoichiometry. No, as I said, the maths is dead easy, it's the chemistry that's difficult, so you have to be 100% sure that you know how to interpret this and you know how to get these variables. If you know that, well, then yes, then the maths becomes very easy. So the first step is to memorize this equation here, big M, which stands for molar mass, is equal to little m, which stands for the sample mass, over n, which stands for the number of moles. And then you also have to remember the units, and the units are grams per mole. And that is also very important to remember. If they give you the sample mass, that is little m in kilograms, well, you have to convert that into grams, otherwise it won't work. All right, now let's actually break down all of these variables. What is big M? Well, big M stands for the molar mass. This is the value that you might see in the periodic table. So for oxygen, for instance, you'll see a 16. That is saying that the molar mass is 16. And look at this formula here and look at the units. What it's telling you is that oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole. That is one mole of oxygen atoms, that is Avogadro's number of oxygen atoms, weighs 16 grams. Now in the IMAT you won't have a periodic table, but they will give you the molar mass. And they will do it like this. It'll be AR bracket and then O equals 16. That just means the molar mass of oxygen is equal to 16. AR stands for relative atomic mass, by the way. Now, I would still remember the molar mass for oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. For hydrogen, molar mass is 1, for oxygen it's 16, and for carbon it is 12. Really, you use these so often that it becomes really easy to memorize them, so it's not really anything you have to stress about, and really it's not likely that they'll ask you to remember them, but it is something that they could expect you to know, so I would just put those to memory anyway. Okay, now let's move on to little m. Little m refers to the sample mass. So this is the mass that they'll actually have in an experiment or in a sample. So if they say in a question, you know, 200 grams of methane was used or 100 grams of blah 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 was used, well, that is referring to little m. The only important thing to remember about this is that it has to be in grams. So if they say one kilogram of methane was used in this experiment, well, then you have to convert that into 1000 grams of methane because this formula won't work with kilograms. It has to be in grams. Then finally we have little n, and little n is just the number of moles, so think the number of atoms or molecules. Now how do you find little n? Well, you find it by looking at the actual chemical reaction. So here you can see the actual molar relationship between the various molecules reacting. If you know, for instance, how many moles of, let's say, methane were used in the reaction, well then you also know how many moles of carbon dioxide or water were produced. So you just do this. Let's say that 100 grams of methane reacted fully with 200 grams of oxygen. Well, then 100 grams of carbon dioxide would have been formed and 200 grams of water would have been formed as well. So knowing how to actually derive these variables is how you solve stoichiometry problems. And I think the best way to illustrate this is through an example. Let's now try this one. And as always, do it yourself first. So what do we have here? Well, a mixture contains 60% sodium chloride. If we have 2.9 kilograms of the mixture, then how much sodium can be extracted? Now, really, this is a super simple question. We just have to use that trusty formula. Big M is equal to little m over little n. And remember the units, grams per mole. So as I've said before, the maths is the easy bit. It's the chemistry that's difficult. You have to know how to interpret everything. All right, so what are we trying to find? Well, we want to find how much sodium can be extracted. And the answer is in kilograms, that is a unit of little m here. So we want to find little m for sodium. How can we do that? We'll always start by asking yourself, what have they given us? They have given us little m for the mixture of sodium chloride and whatever else is in the mixture. And they have given us big M for sodium chloride over here. So clearly what we need to do first is to find little n, that is the number of moles. So let's do that. We'll find big M for sodium chloride. So that is going to be 23 plus 35, because sodium chloride is just one sodium and one chlorine. So 23 plus 35. 
That is equal to 2.9 kilograms. Remember the units, it has to be in grams. So that is equal to 2,900. And N is what we're trying to solve for. So quickly solving for N, N is equal to 2,900 divided by, quickly in our heads, what's 23 plus 35? That is 58. Now, you don't have a calculator in the IMAT, so maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, this doesn't look like a fun thing to work out, but this is the thing with the chemistry section. They will always give you numbers that work out quite nicely. So you should always think to yourself, how are these numbers related? Really, 99% of the time, one of these will be a multiple of the other. So the first thing I think to myself in my head is, what's 29 times 2? Well, that's 58. So instantly, I know what this is going to be. This is going to be equal to 50. So 50 moles. Okay, now this mixture, however, is only 60% sodium chloride. So what we need to actually do is times this by 0.6. So n is equal to 0.6 times 50. Now what is that equal to? Well, that is equal to 30. So we have 30 moles of sodium chloride. So I'll put that here of NaCl. Now we just want to know how many moles of sodium we have. So if we have 30 moles of sodium chloride, how many moles of sodium must we have? Well, 30 as well. So 30 of Na. Okay, now we have the number of moles of sodium and we have the molar mass of sodium. And we want to find the actual sample mass of sodium according to this question. So we have everything we need now. So what is big M for sodium? Well, that's given to us, that's 23. What did we say little n was? Well, we worked that out to be 30. So now we can just solve for m. So m is going to be equal to 30 times 23. So m is equal to, quickly in our heads, what's 23 times 3? Well, that's equal to 69. And then times 10, that is 690 grams. Remember, this is in grams. And they've given us the answer in kilograms. So the answer must be c. So really, it's actually quite a simple question. Whenever you're doing these types of questions, ask yourself this. What have they given me? And given what they've given me, what can I find? Once you've found that, then you can usually find something else. And eventually, you will be able to find what it is the question is asking for. And this comes back to what I said before. It's not the maths that is difficult. Simply memorizing this formula won't help. You can't just plug in values in here and expect to get the correct answer. No, you have to think like a chemist. Now that we've taken a look at that, let's take a look at concentration. And then you use this formula here. C is equal to N over V. You use this whenever you're dealing with some kind of solute being dissolved in a solvent, that is to form a solution. Now, concentration can be expressed in a few different ways. This is the most common, and this is the one you're most likely to encounter in the IMAT, where it's actually a molar solution. But sometimes they could ask for a solution in terms of how many grams there are in the actual solution. In that case, you just change little n to little m, that is the sample mass. But molar concentration is by far the most common, so that's the one we're going to focus on. All right, now the units in this case are moles per liter. So remember that you have to work with liters. If you're given something in centiliters or deciliters, well, then you have to convert it into liters. And if you don't know how to do that, check out my physics video on SI units. All right, so once again, let's break down the formula to make sure that we fully understand it. So little c is concentration. And as I mentioned, it is most commonly expressed in moles per liter, which is the same thing as moles per decimeter cubed. And a mole per decimeter cubed, or a mole per liter, we call molar, so big M. So you'll see it in those units sometimes. They mean the exact same thing. And another way that concentration can be expressed is through these square brackets here. So square bracket with HCl inside just means the concentration of hydrochloric acid. Now, what about little m? Well, that's just the number of moles of the solute. So the thing being dissolved. What about V? Well, V is just the volume of the solution, and that's in liters. And liters are the same thing as decimeters cubed, so make sure that you remember that. All right, now again, I think the best way to illustrate how to use this formula is through an example. So let's do one now. All right, now let's try this one. What mass of sulfur dioxide is required to make a five deciliter solution of concentration 4.0 moles per liter? Okay, now as always do this yourself first, but I'll assume you've already done that. 
This is a concentration type question, and you can see that they've given the concentration as 4 moles per litre. So we're going to use this formula here. C is equal to N over V. All right, now what is it we actually want to find? We want to find the mass of sulfur dioxide. There's no mass in this formula, so we're also going to need to use this formula here. M is equal to M over N. And if we can find N, well, then we can then use this, that is big M, to work out little m. And we will have what we're looking for. So always start out understanding what it is you want to solve for. All right, so first of all, we're going to need to use this concentration formula. And C in this case is 4 moles per liter. So 4 is equal to N, what we're trying to find. And what is the volume? Well, it's 5 deciliters. But remember, this is in liters. So what's that going to be? Well, 5 deciliters is the same as 0.5 liters. And that's quite easy. N is therefore equal to 2. So now we have the number of moles of sulfur dioxide. Now we just need to work out big M, and then we can get little m, and we will be done. Now what is big M for sulfur dioxide? Well, here's where you have to know a bit of chemistry nomenclature. And if you don't, don't worry, I have a video that explains how you actually can understand nomenclature perfectly, but I'm going to assume you already know that. So sulfur dioxide is SO2. That means that big M is going to be equal to 32 plus 16 plus 16. Okay, and that is equal to 64. And according to our trusty formula, 64 is big M, so that is equal to M over little n, which we said was 2. So M is going to be equal to 128 grams. Remember, little m is in grams. And that means that the correct answer is D. So again, super simple formulas. It's the chemistry that's difficult. You have to know what it is you're solving for. But really, this is actually super easy stuff, and it doesn't take long to do. So once you get good at this, you will love these questions in the IMAT, because you can essentially treat them as guaranteed marks. They don't get that much harder than this. All right, before we wrap this video up, I will go over one more formula with you. Now, there are more to learn, but we'll cover that in another video, or else this will just get too long. All right, so you use this formula here whenever there's a before and after scenario with solutions. So what I mean by that is, let's say that you had an original solution and then you poured more solute in, or you poured more solvent in, or you took solute out, or whatever. You can then use this formula to work out whatever it is you're trying to find. So again, I'll break down the formula with you, but really there's no new variables here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to understand. C1 is just the initial concentration, and V1 the initial volume. So this is what we started with. And then when we make a change, well then C2 and V2 will change. And C2 just refers to the final concentration and V2 to the final volume. Now, because you've got both C and V on both sides, well, then you don't actually need to worry about the units. So provided the units are actually the same on the both sides, well, then you don't need to worry about converting them into liters. So again, let's actually do a practice question and see how we can use this formula. All right, let's do the last question for this lesson. A 100 centimeter cubed solution of hydrochloric acid has a concentration of 0.5 molar. What is the concentration if 300 centimeter cubed is added? All right, you can see here that we have a before and after case and it's dealing with concentrations. That means we're gonna be using this formula here. All right, now before we start plugging in values, let's just check that the units are the same. Centimeters cubed on this side, centimeters cubed on that side, perfect. They are the same. We don't need to worry about the units. So what is it we're trying to find? Well, we're trying to find C2. Okay, so let's just plug in the values. C1 is equal to 0.5. V1 is equal to 100. That is equal to C2 times V2. Now, what is V2? Well, we've added 300 centimeters cubed. So don't just put in 300 centimeters cubed. No, the final actual volume will be 300 plus 100 centimeters cubed. So it's 400. Okay, now that's equal to 50, which is equal to C2, 400. So C2 is equal to 50 divided by 400. And that is equal to 0.125. 
And I guess I could put here molar. Obviously, don't write things out that you don't need in the IMAP, but I'm just putting it here to show that this is a concentration. And that corresponds to answer A. Again, this is not difficult stuff. You just need to get practice and then you will love these types of questions. Now, we aren't done with stoichiometry, but I think this video is getting a bit long, so we will leave the rest for future videos.